Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Nina Ibina's Art Journal Prompts and More. It's week three of the On Your Travels prompt um, and this week I want to do a mosaic. Um, I want to do a gecko um, reminiscent from my um, holiday, recent holiday in Spain. There were lots and lots of geckos that we saw up in the mountains, um, outside our house, by the pool etc. So that's what I want to do as my focal image and I want to use some of these mica flates that that, um, my friend Cheryl Johnson sent me a couple of months ago in Happy Mail. I've been itching to give these a try and I thought they would be perfect for this. Now if you want to do um, some kind of mosaic this week then you know I know that not many of you are going to have mica flakes but you know eggshells are ideal for using for mosaics. Torn up pieces of paper just use whatever you have. Um, now I want to colour these with some alcohol ink. Cheryl sent um, a bag of of supplies she sent me some rubber gloves and a face mask um, as well which she said I would need because of the dust in these mica flakes but to start off with what I want to do is I've printed a gecko out um, it's just a free printable um, that I got from the internet and I've got a piece of um, I think this is 300 GSM cardstock and I'm just going to glue this down um, to this piece of cardstock with some glue stick print stick that's all and then I'm going to fussy cut that out fussy cut out uh, my gecko and you can see here that it's gone a bit wonky and bent in places because of course you know the fiddly areas were <laughs> well and truly fiddly to cut around I think I'll be using my gecko that way around and what I'm going to do now is just flatten it underneath a heavy book and put it to one side because I don't need that until later. Now I want to start colouring some of my mica flakes and I've dug out some alcohol inks here in various shades of yellows, butterscotch, um, some reds as well. Um, and I'm going to um, do a voiceover with this part here because I want to put my mask on and I think if I try to talk with the mask on it's just going to come out really muffled um, so there we go I'll do a voiceover for this next part I'm dabbing on a couple of um, drops of alcohol ink to a Tim Holtz sponge pad and then dabbing it onto my mica flakes and I'm adding the alcohol ink to both sides of the mica which is something that um, Cheryl told me I would need to do so there you go you just you can see me here flipping the mica over I'm using a mixture of different colors here this is the darkest and I think this is cranberry um, then I use watermelon butterscotch orange sunshine yellow um, and I think that's pretty much it so I've got three or four different different colors that um, I use to add to my gecko colouring all of my mica flakes and I've done them on both sides which was some um, instructions that Cheryl gave me with the pieces that she sent. Um, these just look so pretty I don't know whether you can still pick up the shine um, you can still see the shine of the mica they're just absolutely beautiful they're gorgeous really really pretty um, and so what I want to do now is glue these pieces colour wise um, I used the darker one here is cranberry um, the lighter red is watermelon then I used butterscotch um, sunshine yellow and orange and then there's a few more of the cranberry and the watermelon down here so hopefully I've covered enough pieces of mica to cover my little gecko 
mica in my lizard. Now I think if I glue my pieces of mica straight onto this white cardboard here, um, you're just going to see the white underneath and I don't really want that. And so I'm going to colour my paper. I've got these Cosmic Shimmer um, crystal tints, which I bought to use with the mica, but um, when I got them home, they weren't quite what I expected. These are very, very translucent. Um, so I'm just going to put some on my glass cutting mat. If I had yellow, I'd probably um, use yellow, but um, you know, at the end of the day, you just used what you have. Um, and I'm just going to go over the whole of my gecko with this and um, dry it first before I start gluing um, things down. So this is just going to give my gecko a bit of a colour base. Now I kept looking at my gecko um, and this way round he just looked as if he was upside down so I think I am um, going to glue the mica on this, this way round. Um, I will ink around the edges anyway so you won't see the pencil marks and I'm just going to use some golden um, regular gel medium to glue my mica down um, and I'm just going to be really really round random um, about it. Um, if you have a look at the geckos anyway, they are sort of, you know, um, multi, multi-coloured um, and the ones that, um, or some of the ones that I saw in Spain were sort of, you know, oranges and, and yellows as well. So I'm just going to start off with the feet here um, and I think I'm going to go light to start off with and I'll be able to trim um, around the edges so I'm just going to glue small pieces of this on um, in fact let's in fact no I shall just trim around the around the edges I think this is how I'm going to going to do it I could have cut that um, small piece down if I'd wanted to but um, and I'm just going to glue it all over my gecko like like this is completely covered now so that's what um, that looks like let me just um, get rid of so that's it and already looking really really pretty and I've just got to be patient now and just leave that to dry so that I can cut um, around the outside I think my gecko is dry now and I am just going to attempt to cut around this um, so I'm just going around with my scissors like this and I should go all the way um, around and hopefully I'll be left with a really nice focal image to use on some kind of a background. Oh my goodness me, that was fiddly to cut out, but I don't know whether you can see the shine from the micro. I need to glue that down there. It is just absolutely amazing. Well worth the effort in my opinion. Now, Cheryl suggested that um, I seal it with um, gloss medium and I haven't got any, so I'm just going to use um, a spray gloss sealant um, and then I can work on the background. The piece of deli paper that I was working on and I don't know whether you can pick up the mica 
because some of it has stuck um, to the background and it's just absolutely gorgeous so I will save that and use that for something else um, and these are all the gorgeous pieces of mica that I've bagged up and that I've got left over for a future project. I've cut a piece of 300 GSM cardstock in half and I'm going to cover it with some of this wallpaper. This is the wallpaper that Debbie Bonner sent me in Happy Mail. Um, I just love the texture of this. It reminds me of sort of, you know, rocks um, that you would see um, a gecko on in Spain. And so I am just going to um, cover a piece of this. I'm just going to cut this piece out here and then I'll um, attach it to my I card. Cut a piece of the wallpaper out big enough to cover my piece of card. And I'm just going to apply some glue over the cardstock all the way around, concentrating on applying plenty to the edges. Glue, um, glue stick is absolutely fine for this and being dry as well it'll dry really quickly without any buckling or anything um, so this is my glue of choice for things like like this so I'm just going to make sure that I've got plenty all over my card so I've got plenty of glue all over my card plenty around the edges I'm just going to take that off um, put my card upside down and then I'm just going to stick that down like that and then I'm just going to use um, a gift card just to make sure that it's attached all the way around um, really focusing on pressing down around the edges and as soon as this is dry I'm just going to give it a quick zap with the heat gun I shall fluffy cut it out I've given my background a coat of clear gesso and I've stippled um, to get sort of inside all of these raised bumpy areas here and the reason I've used clear gesso is that I still want to be able to see some of these colours in the background if possible. Um, I've chosen three colours of paint, um, two deco art and one golden, so green gold, um, transparent yellow ochre and quinacridone gold and I've chosen these particular paints because they're quite transparent translucent and I want to be able to pick up the colour if possible that's in the background but you know I don't want this to be my primary um, colour so I'm going to start off I think by adding some of the transparent um, yellow so I'm just going to apply some of this to my craft mat um, and I think I'm going to add a little bit of water as well just to water it down just just a little bit and I'm going to apply some of this in my background. In fact I'm going to put all of my colours out um, just so that I can dip in to all three. Here we go, let's give these a good a good shake. Whoops a daisy. Let's um, apply a bit of water to each of each of these. I've already got some of that. Oh no I haven't, it was just a, a dried bit. So I'm just going to continue going with some of the yellow um, top and bottom and I'm just going to try and blend all of these colours. Um, I want loads of textures and you know I want this to be sort of like a rocky mountainous um, style background that's the effect I'm going for so you know these colors are just absolutely perfect for for that I might need some more of the yellow ochre so I'll put this on to fast forward and so that you can watch the process but I'm just going to you know continue playing with these colors until I've got the blend um, that I'm after <laughs>
background is looking at the moment and I just love that and I just continued playing with those um, three colours that I showed you just you know going back in there until I was happy with the layering that I got um, but now I want to try and lighten it slightly and I've pulled out a few more colours I've lost um, that bluey purple in the background and that's fine so I'm not worried about it um, anymore um, so I'm going to use these colours here I've got this faux cart enamel a do cast uh, do craft in a sage this is sort of like a, a grey green and just um, a neutral cream colour this is just a, a match pot household paint from the scrap store so I'm just going to put a little bit of each on my gr uh, glass craft mat and this time I'm going to use a natural sponge just to dab in a bit of that paint just again just to you know try and add to these layers of colour until I get sort of like a, a colour that I am happy with. how far I've got so this is my background for my gecko I just I don't know whether you can pick up the mica um, it's just absolutely beautiful I love that but I just feel that my background is just slightly too tall I'm happy with the width um, but I just think it's just ever so slightly too tall so I'm just going to trim it um, and then I'm going to start piecing my piece together. I've taken a smidge off either end and that's just made the world of difference. So that's all I've taken off. Um, and I think I want to add some Inca Gold. I've pulled out three colours, a green platinum and this old silver. So this one here is um, green yellow. And I think I'm just going to add a tiny bit of this to the, to the background. Now I've seen lots of videos where you add glycerin and all sorts to the Inca Golds to to rehydrate them and make them soft again and to be honest none of it has worked for me so I just find that by adding a little tiny bit of water 
works the best. So I'm just going to add some touches of this where I think um, I want it. And I think I might use all three colours. Just again, just adding a few touches of highlights and a bit of shine. Try adding a bit of the treasure gold. Um, so again, I just want a tiny bit on my finger, not too much of this, but again, just a little accent. <gasps> love that. I love the smell of this treasure gold. It's just absolutely wonderful. And again, just tiny bits, tiny accents. To frame my piece and I'm using a Neo Colour 2. Um, this is in raw umber and I'm just going to apply it to the outside. I don't want black. Black would be way, way, way too harsh for this. Um, but I do want to frame it and darken it around the edges. So I'm just going to do this and then I'm going to dab my finger um, on a baby wipe just so that I can blend it in around the edges so being quite hard about how I apply this and then I've got baby wipe here slightly damp baby wipe and I'm just going to keep dabbing my finger on and blending this into my background like so and I'm going to go all the way around all of the edges and just look what a difference that that makes and as soon as I've done that I'll be back and we'll see if we need to add anything else. So I've shaded all around the outside of my piece and I think um, I want my gecko to go something like that but I do want some kind of shading in the background so I'm just going to use it as a template and just whoops don't want that there and just draw around it just so that I can blend that in around the outside and I'm using a really sharp pencil I might need to get a new one I'm using the last regs of this one that I've got here no I need a, a new one here we go is this one here here we are so let me just put it back down again and I'm just going to trace around it and then I can grab a, a water brush just to soften that around the edges. So as soon as I've gone around this um, I shall reach for my paintbrush. So hopefully you can see the outline here and I'm just going to drag this out just to add a little bit of shading to my gecko on the outside and the inside as well just to make sure that when I place it back down that um, it's covered over. This will just help my gecko to stand out better. I went all around my gecko as you saw and then I've just dabbed most of it um, away with a baby wipe so that you've just got the hint of an outline of a shadow and I really really like that I'm, I'm happy with that and I'm just wondering whether I should perhaps add some Stabilo all just to the very edge of my gecko as well. I think I'll try it in one area because of course it's water soluble. I can always um, wash it off if I don't like it and I think I'm going to go all the way around it like, like this. 
my piece is nearly finished now and I don't know whether you can see the outline um, the shadow ready for my gecko um, I've added more shading to my gecko as well I hope you can pick up the mica it's just absolutely beautiful I love that um, and you know as far as the background is concerned who would ever have thought that that had come from a piece of wallpaper I just absolutely love this I've mounted it to another piece of cardstock as well to um, give it more stability so that is really stable um, and let me just show you um, I hope you can pick up the detail on this it's just highly textured there's just so much detail um, and colors going on I'm really really happy with that um, now I've continued using my um, Stabilo not the Stabilo the Neo color um, darkening it around the edges and then I did end up I know I said I wouldn't but I did end up using a bit of black as well just around the outside just to cover up um, the white of the cardstock um, but finally um, just to finish things off I want to add some more of this gold and this is the Florentine treasure gold um, and I'm just going to add a tiny bit just to the very um, edge here I don't know whether you can see that and you know I want to be really really subtle about this I don't want um, too much but I'm going to go all the way around the outside just to you know finish off the framing of my piece and tie in all these wonderful um, metallic colours so I've added my gold around the outside. I don't know whether you can see it if I hold it up really close. I just absolutely love that. And that's really finished um, the edge of my piece really nicely. Um, so, and here we go. If I hold up my gecko as well, just look at that gorgeous mica. Um, and it looks as well as if I've got natural scales. That's just so beautiful. And so I'm going to glue it down something like that. And I'm going to use some golden extra heavy um, gel medium. Um, because of all the texture that I've got going on in the background, I need something quite heavy to hold this in place so I'm just going to apply it to my background like this glue this in place and then I'll decide whether I want to add any kind of quote so I've added my glue in a nice um, thick coat and you can see that some has come over the edges and that's fine because um, it will dry clear so I'm just going to add that and then I'm just going to have to be patient um, press it down and allow that to dry. I shall probably put um, some deli paper on top and weight it down with a book to make sure that that sticks um, nice and firmly. So you can see uh, my piece is being weighted down by a nice heavy book and I've got some quotes from the Tim Holtz um, small talk. Um, Life was meant for great adventure. Always take the scenic route and travel the world over to find the beautiful. I don't know whether I will use any of these or all of them or a couple of them. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to use some of the transparent yellow um, iron oxide that I used in my background um, just to cover these quotes. So I'm just going to put a tiny winny bit on my glass mat. I've got a paintbrush as well which I am watering down and I'm just going to spread some on. I'm doing this on a piece of deli paper just because they're too white to use as they as they are. So there we go we'll just put a fine coat so I can still see um, the quote. Wipe some of that off. There we go. And I can use um, a kitchen towel as well to wipe some more off and make it more mottled. I'm happy with that so I'm going to give that a dry with my heat tool. So whilst my piece is still drying, um, this is now dry, I'm going to go around the outside with this Neo colour um, just so that everything ties in with the background of um, my piece. Here we go. And then I can just smudge it, smudge it out. I might need a little bit more so I'm going to play around with this but this is basically what I am doing. We go let's add a bit more a bit more of the color let's try and smudge that here we are that's better make it look more more vintagey can you see 
Well, here's my finished piece and I'm really happy with how this has turned out. I decided to mount it onto a piece of picture framing mount board that I had in my stash um, just so that I can hang it on the wall. I've just um, applied a picture framing hook just using some turbo glue which has um, stuck that nice and firmly. Um, I just stuck the piece on with turbo glue as well and centralised it onto my piece and then I used the... Um, but is it burnt umber raw umber um, neo color just to um, go around the edges and um, I just used a baby wipe to smudge it and then went over with the um, gold the treasure gold and so I'm going to pop that on my wall I think it's um, coming out on camera a lot darker than than it really is and I just hope that you can pick up the sparkle from that mica because it really really is something special so a true mixed media piece here you know I've used just so many um, different items the mica the wallpaper um paint um you know you name it i've used it inca gold treasure gold <laughs> um so i hope you enjoyed that and i really look forward to seeing how everybody else decides to interpret the prompt this week so many ideas for this on your travels um theme so for those of you that you know are really into doing journal pages this is just absolutely perfect for you if you enjoyed what i've created here as always i'd really appreciate a thumbs up and do let me know what you think um, in the comments below and a huge thank you to Debbie Bonner um, and to Cheryl Johnson for the happy mail that enabled me to do this piece so take care everyone and I'll see you all again soon bye for now